Welcome to Kingdom Authority with James Alford, your source for insight on spiritual warfare, discernment, and the power of God. Be prepared for your eyes to be opened like never before and walk in the power of God's kingdom. Here is your host, James Alford. Welcome to Kingdom Authority. My name is James Alford. Thank you for tuning in. As always, we'll be talking about subjects related to spiritual warfare, discernment, and the power of God. Today, my co-host is Amon Evans. Thanks for coming on, Amon. My pleasure to be here. Man, I tell you what, every time we get on, we have a powerful discussion. And the discussion for today is going to be no no less um, than something great. Um, I was looking at the news here. And I was reading an article in the Daily Mail, and it says here, a mother of Los Angeles solar eclipse killer who murdered Air Force veteran husband and baby before killing herself reveals the legions of demons that led to slaughter. Says Danielle Johnson murdered her partner, Jaylene Allen Cheney, 29, and their eight-month-old baby at their apartment in Woodland Hills, California on April 8th. She fled the scene with her two daughters and pushed both out of the car on the freeway. A nine-year-old made it safely and called for help. Her mother, Sharonda Coles, says she was struggling with mental health issues, low vibrational energy, and postpartum depression. Now, I tell you what, the article's pretty long, but just reading this little piece, this is a lot within itself. I actually, um, went online to to social media and looked this young lady up who was the person who did these murders. And she appeared to be um, just a young woman starting her life. The thing that was different about her, of course, was that um, she was like a psychic. Um, And she was actually well-known. She was what a lot of people call an influencer. Um, But, of course, she had tapped into the demonic. Okay, she was... People were bringing her on shows and she was giving them advice about the spirit realm and how to see this and how to deal with spirits and all that type of stuff. And in actuality, she was a person, as we like to say, that was captive herself. Um, so I thought it was a really interesting story that those demons had in it, it just pretty much taken her over, had her kill her husband. Yeah. She threw her children out of the car. I mean, she literally lost it lost all control what do you what do you think about this this whole story i think that um it's going to be eye-opening like now things are getting the attention of non-believers like uh there's been there was a study a while back in which they were discussing you know like they're like some scientists were like that this has to be you know they were they're viewing different um exorcisms and things like that and they're like there there has to be a spiritual element to what's going on because all the factors on a scientific level are not adding up. Right. So I think like this is one of those things for where science is really looking at this and non-believers are going to start like kind of doubting that this is just like a mass hysteria or right. a mental illness. Yeah, I, I saw the news where um, they had taken um, a person who there were people who were like seeing demon faces and they have mm-hmm. actually... Um, you know, made it a sickness, like a medical disease that you're seeing faces contort in the demons. And of course, we know what that is. These are demons literally manifesting. Um, but science is trying to write off things that are already written in Bible, things in the scripture, and try to write off as something that is, you know, a medical issue versus a spiritual issue. Yeah, they 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 are there. So there's some doing that, and that's been done for a long time. But now, with the level of science advancing, we're finding more and more science accepting, embracing the idea that there's something more to it. So you'll have scientists on one hand that are trying to dismiss it, but actual science where there's no agenda, and that's what started happening. Was like, you know, this is we have to really review look this stuff over again and i think that what we're, we're going to start seeing more of that like this is going to get they're going to take a closer look at this situation and um you're going to kind of see a different view even if it's hard to find there's people doing it you know it's not something is easy to find on the internet where 
a, a non-theistic individual who's a scientist is really speaking on these things because it's, it's, it's looked down upon by the scientific community. But there's no explanation for a lot of these things that are happening, naturally speaking, you right. know, because mental illness has its like their mental illness has a way that it affects individuals on a scientific level. They can monitor how it affects things. The things that you see with demonic possession um, are not do not coincide with that. So this one is not so much a matter of um, those more specific issues, but the people, when you hear the stories like about people who know her and um, people who felt like something was wrong or off, mm -hmm. it's not going to line up with mental illness if you look very closely at it. Absolutely. And I Absolutely. think it's time for, for, for exposure. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I, th I think as we get closer and closer to the, to the, um, I, we're already in the times of the end, but the time of the end, you know, that last moment, um, you know, when we, when we get closer, um, I, th I think is going to, these types of things are going to manifest more and more. And I do believe the scientists will try to write it off, try to explain it away. You know, um, they're going to diagnose everything because, um, they don't want to come to a rat. They don't want to come to a place of receiving biblical truth. They don't want to admit that the Bible actually is real. It's true. You know, even it's funny that scientists, you know, they, they will sit here and they will find things in um, science that line up with what the Bible is saying, you know, especially when it comes to spiritual things, but they won't equate yep. it to the word of God. They, they, they still, you know, they're, they're finding out these things that are spiritual, but they, they, they try to equate it to something else. They, like, like, for instance, they're saying that um, when you look at quantum mechanics, um, you know, quantum mechanics basically says that, you know, uh, something can be in two different states at the same time or two different places at the same time. You know, yeah. well, we, of course, we understand that, that God is everywhere at the same time. You know, he's he's all places. He can be all places at one time. Um, and, but see, scientists in the past, say, well, that's impossible. You can't be in more than one want more than one place at one time where even their scientific things are now showing that actually you can be in more than one place at one time or or disappear one place and appear something else. They're actually finding that in science now, but they still reject the Bible and they still reject the word of God. Right. I think, yeah. And and they they rather, like, it's like the panspermia theory. Like, it's more of, it makes more sense to a scientist that alien seeded earth than that God, than that God did it. And the, the interesting thing about it is like you you believe it didn't happen because it's like once you start really looking at it, it's obvious it didn't happen randomly. So when you the the Francis Crick who co-discovered the the DNA double helix, he looked at it and said this is too complex to have happened randomly when he saw the structure of DNA. So rather than him <laughs> accepting creation and intelligent design, like you know, or or creation, because intelligent design doesn't necessarily mean God. It could mean aliens. Like instead of him accepting creation, he's like, well, it was intelligently designed, but it wasn't God. It was aliens. Right now, there's no there's no evidence for God for aliens at all. There is evidence for God because of biblical accuracy, like um, where it says, "Let there be light before there were suns and stars," and then we realize that photons predate. Uh, the sun and moon and stars. So the so in, in in science, light does have to come before stars and planets because of photons pre predated. So it's like there's evidence that like how would someone who wrote the Bible at that time, who uh, most scientists believe were a bunch of ignorant individuals, how would they accurately get that right? How would they get right that there are fountains of water underneath the ocean and that we men thousands of years later discovered the thermal vents how do we get right there was pathways in the seas when in like the 14 1500s they discovered the uh the ocean currents that boats can travel on and things like that so it's like it's more there's more evidence for creation but you are so it so keen on rejecting god that you have this attributed to aliens which there's no evidence for 
Right, right. It's an attack on biblical truth. And I think we've been, you know, we've been dealing with this, especially when mankind began to um, embrace science. Um, and I think from from a from a natural understanding of natural laws, I, I think science actually lines up with, um, you know, scripture from a natural perspective. But I think scientists try to make it somehow um, different or or. But when I say different, I'm saying they're saying it's not connected to God or even Christians. Christians yeah. don't like to associate science with God. But God, the Bible says that God created the heavens and earth. He put everything in order. OK, <laughs> there was an order about God's creation. And, and we see that order when we look at science. Um, and so we have the scientists who don't want to receive God. And then we, on the other side, we have Christians who don't want to realize that, look, God created this natural world. This is God's creation, you know, and he gave us the ability to exist in a natural world as as fleshly beings, uh, but also blessed us to be able to be spiritual also. Um, right. Which is which is a higher level of existence. You know, the, the natural is temporary. It fades away. It ages. It's tied to time. The spiritual is eternal. OK. Um, and so when we look at science, we want to look at one aspect of God. I, I look at science as the lower aspect of God. It is it is the it's a lower understanding of God when you just look at science. Um, when yeah. you go into the spirit, now you walk into the fullness of God. Uh, and and that's where I think on both sides, people miss it. You you go you go into some church and you start talking about science, or uh, they get offended, you know, and they they reject science. I'm like, well, don't reject it. You have to understand its place. You have to understand its status within things. It, it's like it's like going to a uh, going to a doctor's office, and you know all you want to do is listen to the assistant, you know. And when the doctor comes in, you reject them, even though they're the doctor. You know, you rather listen to the assistant, um, and and that's pretty much how the world has become: is that they reject. With the assist, they, they reject what the doctor's saying, which is God, the 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 healer. You know what I'm saying? The one who has the ability, you know, to actually heal, that has the understanding of all things, and they want to listen to, you know, the assistant, you know, who 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 doesn't even have all the information. And then that's that's how I look at it, and um, it's really unfortunate, you know, that the that this is where where we've landed, but. We have one side who doesn't want to understand natural things, don't want to understand natural science. And I get that. We're people of faith. We want to walk by faith and not by sight and not worry about those types of things. But those things are a part of God. And that's one thing I do want to get on this podcast. I don't want people to think that we're so high in the spirit that we don't realize there is a there is a natural aspect of God's creation. OK, I, to I totally I totally agree. And I felt like that, like. Sp science explains why God explains how right so all you like be and in one of the theories of science called causation there has to be a cause for the level level of order in the universe so it's like it, it, they have all these theories and, they, and even the laws of physics are, are like explain creation because energy cannot be created or destroyed well God is alpha and omega meaning god existed before everything and everything comes from him so that covers that law that explains how there could be energy from god and it can't be created or destroyed where did it come from it had to come from somewhere you know um and it's like they these laws are foundational for science but they only begin after <laughs> you know, the beginning of everything. So like, right. for example, the singularity, which they used to call um, the the Big Bang. It, the Big Bang defies the laws of um, of physics. Like um, you, you, because that energy, you, you can't have energy from nowhere that explodes and creates everything. Even if you have two universes that collided, they had to come from somewhere. So like, no matter what you do, God is the best explanation. And then also science explains how, but God explains why, why did he do it for his pleasure? It says he creates some things. 
Right. So, like, because he chose to, he it was for his desire. He wanted to create it. He it, it explains why. So God wanted to. He said, "Let us make man in our image and our likeness." And so he he made earth to put man on earth. That's why. And then how is explained by science. And then there's so many accurate scientific statements in the Bible that you can't like. I, I have an associate. And he's a scientist, very brilliant, one of the most intelligent gentlemen I know, but he happens to be an atheist. He calls it a, and we joke about it. <laughs> he calls it like a kind of an inside joke. He, call, he calls it an amazing coincidence. <laughs> because even as intelligent as he is, he, he it, it, it's not explainable except for it to be an amazing coincidence. And that's what happens um, when people reject God is that that higher level of understanding becomes a coincidence, rather a higher power or a higher being. And and so, you know, and so people miss out on, you know, that higher faith and just believe it. Like I said, some, there's some things that God has not told us and not going to tell us. There's, there's some things that he's not going to reveal to us. Um, and our answer to that is faith. Just believe God. God said it. Like you said, he tells us, the why he tells us what he's doing you know what i'm saying he he speaks it and we know that if he speaks it it shall be done you know what i'm saying but some things he doesn't explain to us some things he doesn't he doesn't reveal to us you know but this uh, if that's a higher understanding of understanding that hey we don't know everything we're not gonna know everything but we know that we know that god is in control and we know that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven and everything, he put the, the sun, the moon, stars, he put everything on his course. He breathed life into us. He gave us a living soul. He did all these things, okay? Uh, um, and we may not be able to put all the pieces together, but I think science is an effort to to want to explain everything. And I don't think they're ever yeah. going to get there. They're trying. <laughs> and yeah, they, they, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're trying. <laughs> and they and they figure things out, but they, they, don't, they haven't gotten to the source. You know, and, and this this is the crazy part about it is, is that, you know, uh, uh, like I said, you, you hear about them finding, you know, uh, uh, like you said, studying about the Big Bang or, or studying, you know, and all these things where they, they're always missing a piece, always missing a part. They're always in pursuit mm -hmm. of a deeper understanding of things. And some of the things they find out, actually, that's how the, that's how science works. That's how, you know, that's that's the natural laws are actually true, you know, in some mm -hmm. aspects. You know, but some things are more so theory. They just figuring that's how it works, and they're, but they're missing. There is a that grand orchestrator, uh, yeah, a, a grand a, a master who who is in control of everything. And, well, yeah. and if you, they if they look far enough, they're gonna have to become Christians because all they're gonna find is I need to trust God. You know, at the end of all of it, and, and yeah. you know. They're not going to be able to explain all the way up to God. You know, they're just going to have yeah. to believe God. And that's the part I think that that gets them. Yeah. And many of them have there. Uh, there are so many people of men of science and women of science who tried to disprove God and end up proving to themselves <laughs> that God exists because it comes down to you having to suspend logic. Like the way I put it when I'm talking to people it's like I'd have to suspend logic to believe that everything happened without any intervention from a higher being. Like there's so many aspects of um, like we were we were we were talking about something yesterday. My wife and my cousin and I we were talking about like how a child, like when they're allergic to something, and this has happened on several occasions, and they talked about their personal experience. Mm -hmm. It sounds like I can't eat that. Right. Like this was a, an, a child uh, old enough to articulate yourself, never had an allergic reaction or anything. Just like, I can't eat that. There was just something inside of her that told her she couldn't eat fish. And so they're like, you better eat that and just eat it. Just try it. She tries it. She has an allergic reaction and has to get taken to the emergency room. Right. My wife's son, you know, Teresa's son, she, um, he had an, like, he would not touch peanut butter. Just wouldn't touch it. Like, eats everything, loves every other food, just would not touch peanut butter, grabbed something he did not know was peanut butter because it was covered in chocolate, bit into it, and immediately 
she discovered why he doesn't not naturally just never touched it and he had a alerty reaction. So those things, and I say those th say that to say it's a design feature. There's some things you just can't explain. Like how do you explain that when women um, menstruate and they're close in proximity to each other, their menstrual cycle uh, sinks in with each other? So for whatever for whatever reasons, and of course, men, we have our ideas about why it happens uh, and then things like that, because it makes it things easier for everybody. But why does it do that? Like, there's no there's no material explanation to explain right. why two people who are not connected have a reaction within their bodies, a biophysical reaction that syncs something like that together. Right. Th like that's a design feature. Yeah, there's a lot of instances like that. I've, I've known people who were unrelated, but they were close in relationship and they both ended up catching cancer and dying within a week of each other, you know? Yeah, the only, the only, I, the only I remember, that's the first time I heard anything like that, but yeah. when, you, when, you, when I heard that the first time, I believe you, you mentioned that to me the first time I heard it, I started hearing other instances of similar things. Yeah. You know, yeah. when I first heard that. So there's so many aspects of things like um, even symbiotic relationships, like the, the the bacteria within what I believe is the termite. So termites eat wood, but there's a bacteria inside the termite that helps them digest the wood. Right. How can you have like a slow process of development of ev what they call evolution and, and, each of these things can't exist without the other. It right. just doesn't, it has to have happened at the same time. Right. Because if a, if a termite evolves, then there was a point in time it didn't have those bacteria in its stomach. Right. So how would it have ate anything and survived? Like even your blood clots, like mm -hmm. what, what did animals do before the blood clotting evolved to keep them from bleeding to death? Any animal would have just bled to death. Like, so these, the, these things have ha they had to happen at the same time, you know, and there's even things that explain like, uh, the, uh, behemoth being a dinosaur. It says, it, it says in the, in the Bible, it says a behemoth, it says his stones are wrapped in sinew. That means his testes are wrapped in, um, connective muscle, muscle tissue. How would a person unless they saw a dinosaur know that a dinosaur's testicles are inside his body. Right. Like the, the, what's the, what's the chances of someone knowing because they've only would have seen dinosaur bones. Right. So the first full dinosaur skeleton was discovered like the 1500s or something like that. Like how would a person accurately, like how could that match when they do the study of animals and they connect birds to dinosaurs how would a person in the Bible know that about a dinosaur? You could only know that if you saw a dinosaur that was alive. Right. And so it's like, and you can dismiss that. Even the hair chews the cud. They're like, oh, that's a, like, how would a person know that rabbits excrete two substances, one being fecal matter and the other being a psychotrope, which is what's referred to as night droppings that they have to eat. So basically what the cut is, it's a substance your body produces and then you re-chew it for nutrients. Like if a cow ever stops chewing, it dies. So that product, the product that it's chewing that it produces in its stomach makes it a ruminant. They call a, they call a, a rabbit a, a, um, a pseudo ruminant because it doesn't have two stomachs. So the Bible actually explain, explain that you can't eat a rabbit because it chews the cud, but it doesn't have to split the hoof. Right, right. And then come to find out, rabbits do chew the cud. They just excrete it first. Right. So, like, there's just so many things. Like, when people, um, it says, like, in Romans, for example, it says, the, invi the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his, even his inter, even his internal power and in Godhead, like it only makes sense if God did it. Is basically what the scripture is saying. Right. But it's clearly seen. It, it's like it's clearly evident that someone did this. Well, you know, and and, and that's the thing. But it, but there is a constant attack. There's a constant attack against biblical truth. You get laughed at. Um, in many circles, people dismiss you. 
Um, they don't want to hear what you have to say. You know, a lot of scientists are scared to to roll their faith into uh, um, them being scientists because they'll be, you know, kind of kicked to the side or, or not respected within their field. Everybody wants to be respected in their field. They want to be embraced. And and we all and I've, I've seen a lot of studies that show that the scientists that stand up for faith become ostracized um, and, the, and that most of their their colleagues um, do not receive them. Um, yeah. And, 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 and so, you know, they, they get dismissed as, uh, religious fanatics. I mean, you, you hear a bit people talking about religious fanatics and, you know, this and that or whatever. And, and, you know, um, not really realizing that, you know, this person is actually on track for the truth. They they have a more of a clarity of things versus just mm -hmm. time themselves to a lower understanding. It's almost like, mankind wants to have a lower understanding they want to stay in a low understanding of things or or they're like the little kid is like you know you sit there looking at your kid they're trying to figure out something and you can tell them how to do it in like three minutes they're like no, i want to figure it out myself you know yeah and and you know <laughs> and you know yeah, that they will they reject the leadership of their parents yes yes they reject the leadership of their parents they don't want they don't want you to help them they want to do it themselves. And what happens? They hit their heads. They, they make mistakes. And, you know, and, you know, as I know with my son, he, there were times he would just give up. You know, I think God is waiting on uh, people who have resisted the truth of scriptures. He's waiting for them to give up and all they're searching. You know, he's waiting Man. for them to give up and say, you know what? Help me, dad. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Get, show, show me how to do it. You know, or show me, show me who I, who I'm supposed to be or what I'm supposed to do. I think I think mm -hmm. that's what the Lord is wanting from us. He'll let us, you know, go out and press this and press that and try to figure this out and try to figure that out. But at the end of the day, he's hoping that we come back and say, I realize that I, I can't figure this out. And I realize that through all my all my knowledge, there's still a lack. There's still a, a empty piece that only can be filled um by the master of the universe. Um right. which is which is our heavenly father. And you know, it, it's it's crazy, but, you know, but there's constant, you know, there's constant mocking. We sit in news is mocking about faith. I see on social media, a lot of people are mocking um, biblical truth. They're in anything spiritual. They're mocking it. You know, um, you know, even people who call themselves Christians are mocking the things of God and not. Yeah. Not really, really, you know, uh, um taking it serious or, or showing it respect. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, and that's, that's what we're seeing. And people yeah, are just kind of going like, along with it. Yeah. And, and, and it's what we used to like AI, like we are so like AI has some great advantages and, um, and it's a, it's an awesome tool, <laughs> but it's like, they're looking at it wrong. Some people look at it wrong. Like, we can create intelligence. No, you can't. Like, it's like one of the things that, one of the jokes that I heard, it said, okay, we're gonna have a contest. God and man's gonna have a contest. He's like, we're gonna make life. And he's like, I got my, you have your dirt, I got my dirt. And God's like, oh no, hold on, hold on. Use your own dirt. Right. You know, so it's like, so it's like uh, obviously you can't create life without dirt. Right. Well, God created dirt. Like you, you create intelligence. You can't create intelligence without intelligence. Right. You're already intelligent. So right. <laughs> creating artificial intelligence is not a great, you're not really doing anything because all artificial intelligence is, is a form of intelligence that mimics your intelligence. Yeah. It's a parrot that the AI, the AI, the chat bots they're creating now, now they're really good parrots, but they literally are parrots. They take the yeah. information that's inserted into them. And they regurgitate in a way that makes them seem like they have knowledge, but they're really just parrots. And, mm -hmm. th and then they're talking about uh, tying in AI to like quantum, quantum computers, quantum and stuff. Now, quantum, I feel, I feel like quantum computing is teetering on the edge of wizardry and witchcraft because what it does is it gets information from other dimensions. And so they even call it the demon in the machine. Um, yeah, they, they said they send stuff through it and then stuff comes back. They don't know where it comes from. They don't know how it get the information. Um, and so we're going to see AI being tied to these computers that are going to send information into this black hole, this abyss 
and demons, I, I believe intelligent beings are going to respond back through it. You know, it's, yeah, it's, a, and then, it's a witch machine. <laughs> and then and then the thing about it is like, we could tell you right now, the world and the scientists is going to appear like actual intelligence because it's demonic. It is an intelligent entity we've been telling you about. We believe in a, we believe in a, you believe, scientists believe in multiple dimensions. Right. I believe one of those dimensions are the the the, the spiritual realm mentioned in the Bible. Right. If there's multiple dimensions, why can't the Bible talk about a dimension that exists? Right. So they're coming out of the spiritual dimension as demons, and it's it is going to reflect actual intelligence. And we're telling you right now, it's demonic. It's a demon. And then when you start, you're not going to believe it until these um, scientists are manifesting demon possession and then you're going to be running to us and we're going to be more than happy to help you and offer you deliverance as the body of christ <laughs> we're telling you now yeah one of the biggest telltale signs that this thing is you know this whole you know scientific thing you know trying to stay in the realm of science and not receive the things of god is really run Man. by devils um the largest like literally largest scientific machine in the world, the uh, Large Hydrogen Collider. Um, it's called CERN um, uh -huh. over over in Europe. It literally um, has a god, a Hindu god statue in front of its building. Wow. And, and it's, and it's the, the goddess of death, you know, right in, right in front, the god of death right in front is its symbol sitting right there in the front of the building. So when you go in this building, you're seeing the God of death in the, in the Hindu religion, which of course is an evil spirit, you know, at the entrance of this building. So you're giving homage, you're giving respect, you know, to this entity, you know, every time they go in this building, that that's what they're seeing. Why? Because that is the power that is running this, this scientific thing. And they're trying to get man to to open doorways, I believe they're trying to get them to open doorways and gates, um, so that as the Bible talks about the abyss, I, I believe that they're trying to get a gateway where spiritual beings can come into this world in a flesh type manner. I'm not a hundred percent on that, but I'm thinking that's what these evil spirits are trying to do. They they want bodies. We know they want bodies. They're doing everything they can to get bodies. You know. But they try. They want to come here and dominate and rule this earth, um, in in fleshly form. They want the fleshly form, um, well, hey. and they're trying to get here. And I believe that CERN is is a part of them trying to do that. That's deep. That's deep. I think that I think they already. You know, they already can use human bodies. But it's interesting to consider that they trying to manifest in another way other than the possession of humans, which which is clearly evident with the story of Legion when he, when um, the Legion of Demons left the man and entered into swine. So we know they could possess a body, but to take it a step further and come out in another flesh, um, it, it makes, like I would think of it in terms of if they can come out in another flesh, it's superior because they're limited in the human body. You're limited. To what you can do you're limited to the limits of that human body are they trying to come in another form of flesh that is superior to the human body you know like that that would make sense or that is that gives them um uh strength and durability uh above humans so as, as part of them waging war you know against us and part of the 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 miracles they're gonna do when um the Antichrist manifests himself and things like that. That's definitely something deep to consider, you know, yeah. um, because we know they can do it with humans. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why not try something different? Yeah. You know, and that's, they, that's, that's deep. They want a body. Mm -hmm. we, the scripture is clear. They want a body, you know, and when, when, when Jesus is going to cast them a legion out of the man, they want it to go somewhere. And the Bible even talks mm -hmm. about when the spirit goes out of a man, it goes into what we call dry places, you know. Yeah, there, there's something about being inside of a body. So they took going, they went from being in a human to being in a pig. So they want to be in a container, 
um, a, a, a fleshly container. And so I, yeah. I think there's an effort. I think there's, I personally believe, and this is just my personal belief. I'm not saying I have a lot of scriptural back and forth, but I, I believe they, they, they want to harvest. They can harvest their own bodies with no souls. Um, mm -hmm. if, of course, if they can take humans over, if they can infest animals, uh, like you said, I think they're limited in humans, especially, you know, from the aspect of, of humans being the creation of God. Um, I think yeah. there's some limit that God probably has on that, that type because a person can get saved, you know, they can get delivered, all this type of stuff, yeah. or whatever, but then being able to be in bodies and, and remain there and live and enjoy the flesh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Enjoy the flesh. See, there's an enjoyment in the flesh. I think that's what the angels desired. That's what demons desired. They enjoyed the pleasures of the flesh. They probably could not get in the spiritual way, and so yeah, yeah, that accounts for you know the angels that slept with uh, women, and you know, that that speaks to that. And I think that another another logical re reason for them trying to pursue another type of body is you can be cast out of a human. Well, yeah, if it's a human, if it's not a human body, <laughs> why would we would not be able to cast them out? Because the casting out of demons is for deliverance. If it's not a human body in which within which there is a soul we would not be able to cast them out absolutely and they they could wreak havoc so you know that that's that's a scary thought especially i don't know how authentic that video was of them bodies hanging to look like look like empty bodies hanging in a factory or something yeah you know yeah, i don't know I mean, how authentic that video was but you know, if they working on something like that, we, we, well, I ain't in trouble because I got the power of Christ, you know, on my, on my side. Let me, let me but, say this while, let me say this while on this podcast for those of you listening. Uh, we're not saying that in the Bible it says that demons are going to make their own bodies. That's not what we're saying. But we're just, right. we're, we're just talking from the aspect of there's things we don't know. And there's ways, yeah. that, you know, as we enter into the last days, we know that that demons and fallen angels are going to try to dominate the earth. The Bible even says it's going to be just as the days of Noah, and there were all types of mixing uh, going on between humans and and angels, and there was all these uh, uh, beasts that were ungodly yeah. um, that did there was there was completely cut off from God. It was on the earth, um, and so we just you know in essence just talking through what could possibly happen. Um, in yeah, the, we're, we're speculating. Yes, <laughs> which, is, which is interesting. It's interesting to speculate, you know. Yeah. Like, and and that's clear because the Bible is clear on what it's clear on. And, and and for me also personally, if it's not in the Bible, you're only speculating or theorizing. You know, the Bible don't speak on it. You can only speculate. Like I'll give you another example. Who did Adam and Eve marry? You can speculate. Adam and Eve had daughters before they had sons. Right. That makes sense. It's not in the Bible, but it's a reasonable speculation and it's a reasonable conclusion that they had daughters first and then they had sons, which, you know, so it's things like that because who did they mate with and who did when, when, uh, who was, uh, Cain's wife? Well, Cain, Cain was concerned about people finding him and doing stuff to him, you know, right. You know, so they and, was and, 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 yeah, there was. So there's a yeah. lot of stuff that we don't know. We don't have the knowledge of um, that was going on in those days. Um, and, and you know, something that, like I said, I think God just kept it from us. It's all we can do is speculate. Um, but we, I think we as Christians need to be prepared for whatever. The Bible talks about a grand illusion um, that's going to come upon the world, you know, that even the very elect, you know, if, if it were possible, will fall away from Christ. Um, and yeah. so this deception, this craziness um that we're going to be all you know watching um you got to be ready for anything to happen and yeah and be strong enough to stay in christ and, and i think I, I think this is where the aspect of biblical truth and and being able to hold on and 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 you know people trying to to get us to not stand in biblical truth to get us to believe weird things and strange things. I think that's where all this comes from because when, when, when the great, the, 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 the illusion comes, when the great deception comes, you know, if you don't have a strong foundation in biblical truth, 
if you don't know what the scripture says, if you don't have a strong understanding of God and his word, you know, you're going to be open to deception. OK, and you're going to be open to uh, the devices. And as in Ephesians 4 and 4 and 14 talks about, you know, and it talks about the leaders and stuff like that. I'm um, having these leaders in place that uh, um, that we would no more be children tossed to and fro and carried about in every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and by cunning craftiness. Wherefore, they lie in wait to deceive. You know, that right oh, yeah. there, and it's in that scripture, it's talking about saints, you know, being girded up, being strengthened, being edified, you know, by leaders in the body, you know, so that they so they have the knowledge of God, so they have an understanding, you know what I'm saying, so they all come to the knowledge of truth, you know what I'm saying, it is, this, this is what the scripture's talking about, you know, so we don't get carried away, okay, by strange doctrines, by the slight of men, by cunning craftiness, uh, um, and they're lay, waiting, laying in wait to deceive us. And so we have to be grounded in biblical truth because when all this crazy stuff breaks through, through like, for instance, what if, what if, uh, uh, as the Bible talks about, there's going to be a beast that comes out of the sea. What if literally a beast comes out of the sea and begins to perform signs and wonders? People who are not right. grounded in biblical truth are literally going to turn away from Christ. Yeah, be quick to worship. Yeah, they're going to be quick to worship because they're going to see the signs and wonders. They're going to see healings. They're going to see all these things happen. Um, and because they're not girded in truth, they're going to be carried away. And, and, and so, you know, I just, everybody listening, I just want you to be in a mindset to understand that, look, it's very important that we be grounded in the truth of the scriptures and be ready for any device, any deception that may come our way um, so that we're not taken, uh, that we're not taken um, when the evil day comes. When the, when the craziness comes, when when all the wild things right now is just a, I look at this as a priming season. They're priming us for a grand deception. You know, they're they're watering us down. You know, they're they're causing us to be you know not so much focused on the scripture, not so much focused on the word, or or not you know really knowing if we really believe in God or not. They're they're they're, they're pushing the nation or they're pushing the world away from their faith and into natural and carnal understandings of things, you know, mm -hmm. which puts us in a vulnerable place because when deception comes, if you're not grounded, you're going to let it go. Yeah. And, and, and that's where we are. That's where we are. And uh, it's important. Like, you know, it's so funny because it's, it's, it sounds, you know, outlandish. Some of the stuff we're talking about, but it's no different than any other conspiracy theory that was proven to be true. You start seeing these things, and then if it if it turns out where if it turns out the way we're talking about it, even though we're just speculating, you know, it's like every it'll be too late because by it's like when all the all of these um conspiracy theories that came out turned out to be true that people were trying to blow the whistle at the time, all the damage was done. It's like oh they wouldn't do that, they wouldn't do this, they wouldn't do that, and we find out they're doing all kind of experiments on human beings and. Uh, doing all kind of uh, tests on uh, mind control, MK Ultra, and stuff like that. Like, so it's it's not far far fetched, or it's not unreasonable to speculate about what's going on based on the things that we see, you know. And if you believe, like like um um Tucker Carlson, I, I believe it was one of the um, uh, famous commentators. Uh, it did happen to be Fox News, but I mean. Are space you talking about space uh, spacecraft being piloted by um, spiritual entities? Right. You know, people. Like I saw that. People. I saw that article. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, I did, and I, I and it's like I think that um, you it, it's you have to consider why is all this stuff coming out? Why are people questioning? Sciences are questioning science. Because the science doesn't provide enough answers. It provides a lot of answers, but it doesn't provide enough for a pure scientist. Like one of my favorite, I call him one of my favorite non-theists, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He has to go online and correct that he's agnostic and not an atheist. They want to claim him as an atheist. He said, I'm not an atheist because there's not enough information to determine there is no God. 
So it's like, they, they, and that's a true scientist. So when you have these people, so that's what makes, you know, atheism a religion. Like, I feel like atheism is a religion. I feel like Austin, I feel like agno agnosticism is more scientific. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know, there is no way to know one way or the other whether God exists. Right, right. And, so, and that's one of like the Antichrist spirit is behind atheism. Right. Because you, if you deny you, you deny Christ because you don't believe in God. Nobody, you know. So the Antichrist is it, it, Antichrist spirit is, is is specific to a degree, and for those who do acknowledge God, it's more. It's 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 an element for those who do acknowledge God, but it's also an element for those who don't, because it can operate in both realms. It operates in the realm of those who do believe in God and di and don't acknowledge Christ, mm -hmm. and then it operates in the realm of those who don't believe in Christ because they don't believe in God. Right, right, right. Oh. So the you know so um, when it talks about when the Bible we read the Bible and it talks about the Antichrist, you know we have to be um aware of how that affects everything you know right. and how the the antichrist being a spirit like um his, the focus of the focus and primary job of the antichrist is to rebel and, he, and way in first samuel even before the old testament rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft first samuel 1523 and is as iniquity and idolatry. Right. Because right. thou hast rejected the word of the Lord and has rejected, and he also has rejected thee from being king. So he was talking to to Samuel in particular, I'm sorry, he was talking to Saul in particular as being king, but it follows for just rebellion in general. Right, Rebe right. Like, why, yo, you're, 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 there's something else that you acknowledge as creator other than God. Right. Which is science. Right. right. Or th that's why atheism is, is tantamount because in atheism, there's like, why don't, why don't atheists say, why don't they, why do they not adhere to a, to an event of that everything created? Like they don't say, we don't know. They say, oh, it's not God. It was the big bang. Right. You know, like some true people say, like, I don't know how everything started. Right. I don't know how it works. I don't know how it started. That's why I feel like atheism and religion is very few atheists that don't acknowledge another way that that things came about. Right, right. And that's you powerful, know, so, man. That's, that's absolutely powerful what you're saying. Um, we're going to have to wrap this show up, um, but I definitely want to get you back on here to talk about atheism and the spirit of rebellion. I feel like that's going to be a good show. Um, I do mm -hmm. thank everybody for, for joining us today. Um, I thank you for tuning in. Uh, my name is James Alfred. This has been the Kingdom Authority Podcast. Make sure you check us out online. Um, we got some amazing stuff for you. Well, God bless you. We love you. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you for listening to the Kingdom Authority Podcast. Join us every week for powerful teachings, insightful interviews, and testimonies of God's power. To contact us for more info on books and articles from James Alford, make sure you go to jamesalford.org.